Thank you very much for joining us here on the PM Express on the Joy News Channel. My name is Evans Mensah. Tonight, implementing Ropal, finding the middle ground. It is a pretty controversial law, was very controversial when it was being passed. Ten years on, in fact, more than that now, it's almost uh, 13, 12 years on. It is still very controversial. Today, the Electoral Commission has been speaking about it. And let's start and talk about how far we've come. In 2006, after a, a whole year, several years of controversy, we decided to pass a law that would allow Ghanaians living abroad to vote in our national elections. But guess what? It could not be implemented. The Electoral Commission cited logistical and technological challenges why it was impossible to implement it. A whole 10 years after that, in 2000. And 16, a US based advocacy group went to court and said, Listen, we cannot sit down idle. While this law that will allow us, um, Ghanaians living abroad to vote, sits on the books without implementation. They got a judgment in their favor at the Accra High Court that compels the Electoral Commission to implement this law that will allow the Ghanaians living abroad to vote. The court was emphatic and place a deadline on the Electoral Commission to enforce and implement this law. And this verdict was delivered on the 18th of December, 2017. Now, the court gave the Electoral Commission 12 months to implement this law. Now, we've been doing the calculations. 12 months from the 18th of December last year leaves the Electoral Commission a whole year ending 18th of December 2018. Now, guess what? Counting from today, the Electoral Commission has 55 days left to implement the Ropal or they will be in contempt of court. That is how serious this is. But somehow, it hasn't grabbed the headlines until today. We are going to be dissecting that. 55 days to the end of the deadline imposed by the High Court. But the High Court left a caveat. It said, if the Electoral Commission, for some reason, it's unable to implement the Ropal, then 30 days before the expiration, which is 30 days before the 18th of December 2018, they must write formally, not only to the public, but to the court, explaining in detail why they cannot implement the law. So, the Electoral Commission somehow caught a break because this new president, another Dankwa Kufuado, this year said very emphatically that, listen, I will provide you all the resources you need to implement the Rupal for the 2020 elections. That is a break the EC court. However, the controversy hasn't stopped. Today, when the Electoral Commission addressed a press conference, it was addressing the press conference on the back of a controversy. Last week, when they held an IPAC meeting, it emerged. In fact, the decision that was taken was to form a committee of political parties, civil society, and electoral commission to draw a roadmap for the implementation. But something very interesting happened after this was done. It emerged that the group, from the group that went to court and led by Samson Lada Yenini, lawyer, that apparently in court, during the case, the electoral commission came to the high court and said, listen, in 2011, we formed a committee, high-powered committee, very strong representation, and that committee drew a very comprehensive, and the word comprehensive is a word that was used by the court, a very comprehensive roadmap was already drawn, and that they were ready to implement the Ropal based on the recommendation of that committee. However, a whole how many years on, the Electoral Commission again is setting up another committee. The group says that is a duplication of the work the Electoral Commission has already done. And it, it is possibly amounting to causing financial loss. The EC chairperson has been addressing that concern today uh, at its headquarters. This is what Madame Jean Mensah told us when we put that question to her. We agreed that the committee would be set up, you know, and would include a representative from the MPP, a representative from the NDC, and one rep from the non-parliamentary parties. It would also include two, civil, two members of civil society and three members of the commission. So it's based on their work, you know, that would inform the commission on how to start 
and whether or not to implement it for 2020. So these are the questions we have put in, in, in terms of the terms of reference that we've given to the working group, whether or not it will be possible to implement WOPA fully at all, at all in 2020, and if it's if it if there are things that it, we should implement, whether it should be piloted or whether we should go full scale. But is it possible that 2020 we can implement Europa? Well, it's because difficult I know that work, work work has been done. I'm, I'm told by the commission. Not much. In the past, as you know, you know ex some work has been done, but it focused on Ghanaians who were working at the various embassies and who were students that had been supported by, who were given scholarship by the governor government to go to school and so on. They were registered and allowed to vote, mm -hmm. even that they were voting by proxy. Okay. This means that we have to go to 48 countries, and I'm sure there are more, where Ghana has you know, high commissions and the, you know, register people. I think there's a criteria of registering about a, you know, not less than 500 people in each country. And so you look at that. So it's, it's a lot of work that has to be done. Is this the that 2011 register? committee you're talking about? Because we, we know is, that 2011, yes. there was a committee. They've done some work on it. They've so so I, I have a problem with the, the, the new committee that is yet to set, set up mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. again, do the same work that 2011 committee yeah. did. It's not the same work. Because the 2011, what they did was to register Ghanaians who were working in, you know, the embassies, as I said, and Ghanaian students who were on scholarship from the Government of Ghana scholarship. Right. Now we are talking about extending to every Ghanaian. That registration hasn't been done. Mm. You know, it hasn't been done and, okay. you know, they haven't been provided, you know, records and so, I mean, an opportunity to register and vote there. Mm. You know, what we did, what was done in, in the past was to register, as I said, citizens or Ghanaians working in embassies and with the United Nations and so on, and those who, students who were on Ghana government scholarship, and even then they were voting by proxy. So this is a very different matter, it's very extensive. It's like holding elections within our country, Ghana here. Of course, you have to you know, set up polling stations all over for, to enable people to vote, count it, and that's, it's an extensive process. And, and so that's Madame Jim Mensah. And then later on, she talks about the fact that this committee they set up probably will have four months to do its work. Four months will seriously overshoot the cost deadline. And then he says, well, would you implement it 2020? He says, maybe we will. Now, as you've heard, if they do this and they go ahead with this committee, Samson Lada Yenini, who is loyal for the guys who went to court, insists it's going to be a duplication of it. So the controversy, a lot of them. He's dismissing concerns that it should be a duplication. You've heard that. She says it's not setting whether or not it will be implemented. That is a controversy that, again, that the guys who went to court are challenging. The lawyer says if, if this is what the approach is, then it's possibly also, as we know, possible jail time if you are in contempt of court. All this will be explored here on PM Messages. When we return from that break, my guests are seated. We'll delve right into the detail. In the studio with me is the national organizer of the NDC, uh, Mr. Kofi Adams. Mr. Adams, thank you for joining us here on PM Express. Also with us in the studio is Evans Nimaku. He's the director of elections of the Governor New Patriotic Party. On Skype right now is something Lada Yenini. I want to start with something uh, on, on the line. Something we just had the EC chairperson dismiss your concerns that this committee that what, what has been established is going to be a duplication. Your reaction? I like to repeat what I told you earlier on news news night. That from what I'm hearing from the electoral commission, I can summarize what I'm gathering as follows. That number one, the electoral commission qua a commission. The electoral commission qua its commissioners as in the individual commissioners. The electoral commission qua eight other members and officers are not reading their own laws and they are not reading their own reports. Reports generated by committees and consultants that they set up and paid. Number two, if a law is passed in 2006, February 24, the law 
was passed after extensive consultations across the length and breadth of this country because of the attraction that this particular law generated. And all of us will, re will remember the Rupal arguments. Now, after those extensive consultations, Parliament, as a collective, passed the law. And the president assented to the law. Once it became a law, the Electoral Commission was duty-bound to implement the law. Guess what? It did not. It kept giving lip service from Afarijan to the officers within Afarijan's era very early on in 2007-2008 they kept talking about doing uh, rounds, going to Ghanaians abroad and finding out how to, you know, uh, operationalize the law. Nothing happened. Then in 2011, the Electoral Commission set up its own committee and I'm holding the report here. How did I get to know about this report? When we went to court, the Electoral Commission submitted three documents because we had alleged that the Electoral Commission had gone to sleep and was not doing its job as mandated by the law. To prove us wrong, the Electoral Commission brought three different documents. I'm holding in my hand right here one of the documents which you, have, you are privy to. And it's titled Report of the Subcommittee on Rupa and Political Parties Act on the Implementation of the Representation of the People Amendment Act, Rupa. It is dated September 2011. The committee members, it's evident on it, they have signed and they are K. Safu Kantanka. I'm sure all of us know him. Mm -hmm. Um, he was a chairman, E. Agrifin. He, he was of the EC. Case of Kantaka also was of the EC. Then you had Dr. Kwesi Jonah, who represented CEOs, uh, CSOs. You had Alhaji Huduyaya of the NDC, T. N. Wadbrew of the DPP, Dan Boche of the NPP. Bernard Mona of the PNC, and Christian Ousupari of the EC as a secretary for this committee. And the committee produced recommendations. I am sorry to announce to the Electoral Commission chairperson who gave this interview that we listened to a while ago that she hasn't read this document. Because if she did, she will not say that what the committee did was to work on how to register Ghanaians who are on mission, who are on UN work, or who are in working uh, in Ghanaian embassies, or who are students on scholarship. Mm. Because when you read this document, there is not a single mention of this category of diaspora voters. In fact, those persons do not vote as a result of the benevolence of any committee set up in 2011. They vote as a result of law. So, in fact, when we went to court, we made the argument that it is discriminatory for certain category of Ghanaians who live abroad to be registered where they are and to vote from where they are when another category of Ghanaians, equally uh, Ghanaians, will not be given that opportunity. So what she said in that interview, I am sorry to say, was complete untruth. Yeah, and, and something. Again, when they finish with this work, yeah. they will, you will see mm. that there appears to have been a, a consultant appointed by the Electoral Commission subsequent to this uh, committee's work, who also virtually duplicated the committee's work and spoke about challenges. The committee and this particular consultant all 
spoke the same language. I see. That let's begin the implementation, but limited to presidential elections. I see. Then they gave out the modalities of registering people. So, so we, we've gone through we've gone through this Ghanaian whole thing twice them. already, and it appears we are going to have a, a third time. But let me ask you. I think this is the most important point here, that the the order you secured expires on the 18th of December. 2018, which is like 55 days away. From what the Electoral Commission is saying now, this latest committee they formed, they're suggesting they're going to be giving them four months to wrap up work. That is going to seriously overshoot that deadline. What is it that you and your clients are preparing to do on this? Right. Um, the, the Human Rights Court, Justice Anthony Ebua, who is a Court of Appeal judge, decided to give them a certain grace period even though the judgment was obtained as dated, as you say, he said they were to implement, they were to make preparations and present a CI, a constitutional instrument. instrument. Mm. Because that is the central thing that is lacking yeah. for the full implementation of the law. Yeah. So the order was that they should get a constitutional instrument, take to parliament within 12 calendar months. Yeah. Then he, he in the judgment, the court's order was that the, the days start counting from the 1st of January 2018. Mm. So, in fact, it is the 1st of January 2019 that the deadline will would have come. Mm. And when it does, when you read the judgment, there is a specific responsibility on the individual commissioners and the commission as a body. Now, when you, when you do not obey the orders of a court, and let's not forget one thing. This was an order by way of a writ of a mandamus. Mm, that compels them to do what they the are. Commissioners and the commission. Yeah. If they do not comply and do as the, the court order dictates, they will be in contempt of court. And like I mentioned, the IGP who is guarded by uh, uh, five, four or more police officers wherever he goes, has just been found guilty of contempt and is pending to be sentenced, they should wait. I, am, I have no doubt that if they do not comply with the orders of the court, they are likely to face prison terms or mm. fines. And, and that is, the, I guess, the, the, the bottom line of it. Sam, I'm grateful that, that, that you joined us with that perspective. I, I, Ms. Adams, where do you stand? Where, where, where does your party stand on this? Because your, have you sent your, the name, the rep, to this committee already? The evidence, good evening to your viewers. Yeah, the party have sent the nominee for okay. the committee. Who, who is this, by the way? Uh, Dr. Benjamin Kumbo is okay. the nominee for the NDC. Okay. When we went for the meeting, uh, Mr. Osupare, whose name uh, Samson mentioned, took the meeting through the various reforms that the Electoral Commission have uh, uh, considered over the years and what they think is within the Commission, what they think is government responsibility, what they think is Parliament's uh, responsibility. They laid all those things out. What they thought that IPAC must come in to help in making sure that we succeed in doing so. Truly speaking, Nobody is opposed to Ghanaians having the opportunity to determine their leaders because exactly that is what the constitution says. Mm. The constitution says all Ghanaians must be registered to vote in general <coughs> elections. Mm -hmm. The constitution doesn't say... It doesn't impose geographical limitations. Geographical limitations. Oh, yeah. Two, it doesn't also say they should register some Ghanaians to vote in all general elections and register some to vote only in presidential, presidential elections. elections. So you should start asking yourself, why the request to limit their voting to just one particular election? Because the constitutional basis upon which they went to court was that they have a right to register as Ghanaians to vote in general elections. The general elections, i.e., are the district level elections where we select unit committee members and select assembly members at the electoral area level, then the parliamentary elections, then the presidential election, and of course, the referenda that we do from time to time as is going to happen in the areas demarcated for the uh, regional creations. So 
immediately you get to a point where you think that it's not possible to take part in some of the general elections except one it means there's a problem it means there's a problem before the electoral commission usually will develop their CIs, they have to identify what they call polling station or registration centers. Mm. As it stands now, where are you going to identify as your polling station or registration centers? When you have done so, don't forget that if you pick our constitution that allows for a political party to be registered, it demands that the political party to qualify to register must have offices in a certain number of what districts in the country. Yeah. It doesn't demand that that group that wants to register as a political party must also have offices abroad. So, when you begin to extend facilities, pulling stations beyond the geographic location of this country. Who is going to create opportunity for these political parties to function in all those areas? You have to do it yourself. No. You want the vote. No, no, no. In the country, to be able to function as a political, because if you interpret the law that says that Ghanaians should be registered, and you mean that they should be registered everywhere they find uh -huh. themselves. And that has found its way into a law, and the court has ruled, and so on and so forth. That same laws also tells you that when you want to register a party, you must have a certain level of presence within the boundaries of this country. Uh -huh. Beyond that, maybe some parties may have the capacity. Others will not. Who is going to facilitate? Who is going to give the assurance that when your party members apply for travel visas, into this country to, in order to go and campaign to the Ghanaians, they will be granted. Assuming the party applies that we are sending this person. Yeah, but, but that one is your responsibility. If you, if you don't want what, to do what, it, so, other parties who so, can do it will no, do it. No, you are applying. But even in Ghana, not all parties can campaign like that the way you, you do. You are applying and saying that these are the people I'm sending to America to go yeah. and campaign for my party. Yeah. But you already have a big. A, a, a no, North don't American talk branch. about we already. You don't have a branch. I'm saying that America. don't talk about we already. We have about 20 something political parties yeah. that participate in elections. But, so but my point is, these things you are saying applies in Ghana too. Evans, Evans. A lot of smaller parties Evans, don't have the presence you Evans, have across the country. Evans, as we speak now, yeah. as we speak now, the law that applies for registration, we have done it in, in the past, there used to be a residential clause yeah. that you needed to have stayed in a particular area over My a certain period. number of days yeah. or months before you can register. Now, that burden has been taken off. So anyone, including our brothers who are out, if you fly into the country today and the Electoral Commission is starting registration tomorrow and you hail from a particular area, you will be able to yeah. register. So that, that limitation has been taken off as we moved on. Mm. So the same argument you are applying to the political parties that they should do all those things themselves, another person will argue that already the limitation mm. that denies you because you were staying outside of this country's borders has been taken yeah. off over the period. But, but so but fundamentally, you are in support of the desire of this latest leadership to implement this. That's why you're coming you see, to your you see, You see, I can tell you and he knows. Mm -hmm. The Electoral Commission, per the political party laws, have a responsibility to conduct the internal elections of the political parties. True. Over the years, as a result of lack of resource and funding, they have had to depend on political parties to pay for that service, even though they are supposed to. True. So even internal elections, they can't do it. Let you more can't do it. Elections. Just internal party yeah. elections. But, but, few police but they don't have a choice anymore. Do Something said they don't I'm have a choice that. anymore. But but the, the ruling, the ruling the gives ruling them a caveat. First, no, yeah. the ruling gives them if you a can't, caveat. That if you days, can't, yes. thirty days. Yeah, and it's not still too late, especially when the commission itself. You see, if it was that easy, the 
chairperson of the electoral commission in her address would have just told the parties that they are going to this do and this and this is what yeah. we are going to do. We have yeah. identified this number of polling stations yeah. that we are going to. That is that why we are going set to set up the committee. That, but yeah, that committee is why, duplicating what that I'm has already that, been done. I'm saying that if that work was easy to implement, they would just would have taken it and go and implement. It. No, but it is. It is because it's just not possible to implement it in the way it is. That's why they are mm. establishing this committee. Let me bring in Gary. Gary, you haven't sent your name. Thank you very much. You haven't sent your but name to the my committee. My name is Evans. 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 <laughs> Evans. Yes. Look at me. Um, yes. Evans Nemako. Well, you well, haven't sent your name. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, we have. You uh, have? Yes, we have. Uh, because I told you, you're, you're holding a steering committee tomorrow to sort of firm this up. You know, I mean, the party has le decision-making levels, mm -hmm. and we've submitted the, the name of our nominee. Who is this? To the EC, the General Secretary, Mr. John Boydou. He's going to represent He's you going on to this represent committee. the party okay. on the committee. So th that's about it. Then, as Kofi said, uh, at the IPAC meeting of last week, 18th of, of this month, the, the EC informed the political parties of some of the reforms they've been able to mm -hmm. implement, and those that are beyond their their boundaries, which they expect the, the AG and parliament, in the case of the legal aspect, to help with the, with the fashion out of the CI mm -hmm. for its implementation. Oh, so so they, they actually talked about the CI too? Yes. So, oh, okay. so, so one, one is Committing to actually do it? Yes. Oh, okay. uh, one, I, uh, that's why I have a bit of challenge with uh, Samson's uh, position. What, that, what challenge do you have? That maybe the EC uh, has not read the reports of the consultant and the committee they formed to come out with the proposal of implementing the ROPA arrangements. But you understand uh, why he says that? Yeah, but you see, and the woman said it, and Kofi has also reiterated the point, if it had been that easy implementing it as it is in, the, yeah. in those uh, commission's reports, the DC would have gone ahead yeah, but, but, to but do the, the implementation. But the point makes is, the current EC leaders say that let's form a committee which you've submitted your name. Yes. Something is saying to you that there's already a very comprehensive report mm. from another committee that the EC formed in 2007, right? That did a proper roadmap. I mean, if I read the, the judgment, the judgment yeah, described... Why didn't you go to court yeah, yeah. to compel the implementation, the implementation of that? that, 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 that but, but Evans, but that, 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 that's besides the point. But the point to you is... It's a fact that that report exists. Mm -hmm. And what you are doing now, which you are participating in, is a duplication of that. Why doesn't he just take that one? And well, I, I, I don't see that as duplication. The, the, the chair of the commission told us that uh, the arrangement for, for the effective implementation of ROPA is to ensure that all administrative arrangements are put in place as a test now. I don't think we have it. Kofi mentioned that in Ghana, if you want to register a political party, you need to have representation of your offices in two thirds of, of the, all district. the districts. You, so if you don't have it, you cannot constitute yourself as a political party, let alone going beyond the borders of Ghana. So there are practical challenges. Maybe the legal aspect, yes, has been pronounced by the High Court. What is left is for the EC to come out with an efficient mechanism of implementing it. And here we are, even in our common limited registration exercise that was held between 16th and, uh, and, and, and 20, 25th, uh, had uh, serious challenges. So even internal arrangement, there are challenges. And we should bear in mind that the EC has also changed. Mm. There has been change of leadership. I, I, so? And so, yes, uh, so some of the implementation... It's an institution. Yeah, I'm not here to speak for the EC, though, but I think that what the EC now seeks to do is to engage political parties. Yeah, but that was done on, by a yes. previous committee set up uh, under Afarijan. Yes, but they've not been able to do it. So what is the best way Meanwhile, of getting the report it done? Is there. The best way of getting it done, how do we get it? Not long Implement ago. Implement the report. No, even that your even commission not long ago. Commissioned. Even the December twenty seven referendum, the EC engaged the political parties, who were part of the the committee, the parliamentary select committee on legislation that's looking at the CI for the conduct of that referendum. Mm -hmm. So in the same way, if they want to do the repair, there has to be an arrangement to get proper CI mm. to ensure effective and efficient. So you agree? So that there uh -huh. will be credibility. Okay. You agree okay? with Kofi that 
it's just not possible within the time frame that Samsi and Co are talking about. I'll, I'll reserve that for all of us to be to the EC and have serious discussion. But you don't have a choice anymore. What is left for now is for the EC to come out and say that these are the steps you're going to take to implement mm. the rope. And it says the committee's work possible. is going to take four, four months possibly to come so, to So country. in the last IPAC meeting, the EC on its own arrangement put it on the agenda whether it is feasible to do the implementation in 2020, 2020. or beyond. beyond. But your so, president, your president, and when I say your president, I mean our president. Our president. Yes. <laughs> but uh, the president who won a ticket on your party, yes. Nanado Nkwaku yes. had said publicly yes. that he will make every resource available for the Electoral Commission to implement this. And he has his eye on 2020. He, he didn't mention 2020. He said that he will facilitate for EC to mm -hmm. do the implementation of yes. ROPA. It is up to EC now to come out with the program to do the implementation. And now the EC feels that let's broaden the discussion of the implementation of ROPA because of the challenges they perceive it as it. Mm. But also want to engage political parties. So mm. I don't see any difficulty with that at all. Mm. Let's, I mean, it is better we take our time to go through it and have a very credible arrangement so that all parties, all stakeholders will accept the outcome of elections that will be conducted, including uh, allowing Ghanaian citizens living outside of the borders of Ghana. Mm -hmm. She mentioned that mm -hmm. even where some few people, some few citizens of Ghana have been given the opportunity to vote, it had been done by proxy. Why can't we take our time and fashion out an arrangement, a CI, that will help us conduct a very credible election for all stakeholders mm. to be happy with the outcome. Sophie? Yes. So it's, 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 it's interesting that both of you agree on this. Yeah, oh. Of course, because we are, we are, <laughs> we, because we it's are, rare, we are you, where, where you, see, rare you find you see, you NDC see, see, MPP you when see, it comes to election, you see, agree the, on something. The events, the truth is that, like he said, the legal part has been dealt with. Mm -hmm. People looked at the constitution, <laughs> interpreted it. You're almost suggesting the court was being that, or talking you, utopian that language. When, that when, this is not possible. When not really. all, all the all, through all the processes and the court has given a ruling. It's like some of the things that we have in our statute yeah. books. For example, like even death sentence. Yeah. You know that up to date, our courts still sentence people to death. Mm. But no president, I think minus uh, uh, President Jerry Rollins, who did one because of the murders that were going on in the Western region and the rest, no one has signed. But the courts have ruled and sentenced the persons. The same is with this, this law. The court have actually ruled. Mm -hmm. So it's like you have been sentenced to death, but somebody must sign for that to be, to be completed. And then the person is not signing. The Electoral Commission is with the political parties who are going to lead also the process, need seriously to engage. And I tell you that if it was just possible, so easy, like we are all being made to believe by uh, the lawyers when they, are, when they are speaking, the EC would have just picked that document and said, OK, this is how we are going to implement it. But that document doesn't even tell you where registration centers or police stations will be created. Mm. It doesn't. I see. Now, it doesn't. We'll, we'll take a short break. When we return, I'll get Samson's reaction to what we've heard from the NDC and the MPP. And then we'll bring in the other political parties just to gauge what, what they think uh, about this as well. Plus, the last time at the EC, uh, it was suggested by General Mosquito that if they really want to implement it, then they should pilot it. We'll hear no, from. No, he didn't say pilot. It was the EC chairperson herself who, who said talked it. about pilot. Yeah. And then I raised that elections, you can pilot even elections. You either do you need the whole. Well, district. The, so it says use the district level. So election. use the district is not a pilot. Yeah. It means that we are implementing mm -hmm. it fully. Fully, okay. Because well, pilot well, is doing yeah, a yeah. small section. Well, well, no, but what, I, I think we'll come to that. Just hold on. Just hold on. Just hold on. I know it's a controversial one. We'll come to that because she addresses that as well. And we'll play what she said to that. Stay with us. You're live on PM Express. Uh, I still, I'm still here with Kofi Adams, national organizer of the NDC, and uh, Evans Nemako. My name's Sik. He is the director of elections of the MPP. On Skype is Samson Lada Yindi. Samson, a lot has been said. The two parties 
uh, agree that what the court has prescribed in terms of the roadmap and the CI with the time frame essentially isn't possible. And what's your reaction to all that? Yeah, see what um, the gentleman in the studio, with all due respect to them, <laughs> um, they should stop taking all of us for a ride. Okay, we are we have gone beyond the arguments they are raising in the studio. We have long gone past all those arguments. See, the gentlemen sitting in the studio themselves, with due respect once again, haven't read the committee's report, the committee set up by the EC, the consultant later who did work again and duplicated the committee's work. Look, this committee was not a small committee. Dan Boche, I don't believe, doesn't know elections. I don't believe Evan Marcos in there knows more than Dan Boche does. I don't believe that um, uh, my good friend Kofi Adam sitting there knows more than who Diaya does on elections. Okay? Now, he, he has, uh, Kofi Adam says, um, if you extend it to abroad, how are the parties going to go there and do their work? Can he answer the question, what they do now about those who are in abroad, register in abroad and vote from abroad? What do they do about that? How do they send their officials there? He's talking about polling stations and polling centers. He should read well, the report. Kofi says nobody and votes from abroad. You said? Ms. Adams just retorted that nobody votes from abroad. People vote from abroad. People on UN mission. People in Ghana's embassies. People who are Ghanaians who are studying in, under scholarship. Under law, they have been voting from abroad. They don't vote. They don't come to Ghana to vote. So that is, that is information. Okay. Now, just a second. Just a second. Um, just a second. Briefly. Yes, briefly. Because... Yes. Uh, Kofi, you, dis you, you, you say no. You, you what th they do is that they get the opportunity to be registered because they are known and placed on the register. Mm -hmm. And what they exercise their franchise through proxies. So they are allowed to do so. And that's why the, the military, you have all these proxy lists from the military. You have the embassy. So, so somebody some, here some does come the voting home. on their behalf? Yeah. yeah. Some come home to come and vote. So the voting is not... Done where it's not, they are. It's not done where they are, and then the results counted there, and then sent sent to Ghana, and then okay. to be to be added. Samson. According to the law, those are permitted to be registered where they are and to vote from where they are. The court has endorsed that decision that that is what goes on. I don't understand the language you use, but are. guess what? The, the problems they are the problems they are recounting now have been problems. They have talked about since 2006 when the law was passed. When the committee sat, did the committee resolve the problem they are, they are speaking about? Yes, the committee emphatically resolved the problems. Who to vote? This is what the, the committee said. Um, requirement for registration. They group a Ghanaian with a, a passport, a valid resident permit, and three, proof of dual citizenship for those who claim to hold dual citizenship. Then uh, there is authentic, authenticity of uh, resident permits. They address that. Guess what? Registration centers and polling stations. The committee addressed it. And then let me just read a, just a small bit of what they said. They said, Ropaz cannot be extended to every country where there is a Ghanaian. The committee therefore recommends that Countries must be grouped into the following categories for the purposes of setting up registration centers and polling stations. Check the wisdom in what they suggested. One, countries where Ghana has diplomatic missions. Two, countries that have Ghanaian population of at least 500 but do not come under category one or two above. Appointment of registration and election officials. I'm just summarizing portions to you. Mm. The commission shall appoint registration and election officials in accordance with Section 1-2 of the Representation of the People Amendment Act, mm. 2006, at 699. Mode and frequency of registration. Design of the registration forms. They took care of all of this. Mm. 
challenge at the registrations. Handling registration challenges. You see, that sounds very petitions comprehensive. Against the sessions. Ever just hold on one minute. Objecting to yeah. inclusion of names on the register. Uh, um, handling of objections. Then, <laughs> then, 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 guess what? Where they thought there is a little problem, they refer to the Attorney General to resolve. And even that, the consultant who also did the work. And the consult consultants work to guess what the title is modalities modalities for the for the implementation and they say where there is an issue they all refer to the attorney general and it is one they have resolved all the issues the guys in the studio sitting there are complaining about we have been complaining about them since 2006 yeah so when Even. shall we ever be ready now yes, something, something that's a that's a question i want to put to them i'm grateful that you joined us yes uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, let, let, yeah. Me, let me give the case because he's on the line. Something just one minute, 60 seconds. Yeah. The Electoral Commission of Ghana supervises diaspora voting for other African countries here in Ghana. We have 115 countries that do diaspora voting. There are 28 of these countries in Africa. We have, we have countries such as um, uh, Senegal. South Africa, Namibia, Niger, Niger. Repeat that with me, Niger. <laughs> Are you saying Niger is better than Ghana? Niger. Mozambique, yeah. Cape Verde, South Sudan, they all do diaspora voting. We have gone over this and again. So please, can we simply refer to the reports? Yeah. And what the court ordered is for a CI not to hold another uh, uh, roundtable discussion. Committee and, and the that, uh, uh, uh the caveat that uh, Kofi Adams refers to, it is not an open caveat that they should sit and then at the end of it come and explain to Ghanaian. Mm. Guess what? You hold on and, and watch. People will go to jail. <laughs> I see. Oh. Samson, I'm grateful. Uh, yes. Uh, he has just talk law. There are lawyers who also advise the commission. And the commission itself also have lawyers who sit there. The commission chair herself is also a lawyer. If it is implementable, the way he's just talking about it, it would have been implemented in the past, and they would have just picked it, and then go... The EC it. is simply not paying attention to the recommendation in no, 2011. No, no. If, That's if, the, listen, if those recommendations... Look how comprehensive listen, that sounds. It can be comprehensive. How do you refer to that as comprehensive? How does it solve the party's participation? Participation must you must deal with it yourself. Why should we deal with it? Why should I? Why no, should no, I no, no, no. Uh -huh. for you so to go and come to the in, in the US? In Ghana, right. here, if I have to move, yeah, if I have to go and observe, and do, do I pay listen, for you to move? You, you don't move pay. yourself, yes, you don't pay, yes, but you know what? Sometimes I have people in a particular community, mm -hmm. but I still move agents from another point for them to go move there. Move your branches in listen. the US. Why, sh why should I if I do what if I don't have a branch? Ah, then, then that's what it. If I don't, no, it shouldn't be the case. Okay. So that's why I'm telling you that what has happened is only one side. Okay. The major part, which is the political parties, that makes it possible for all that he is talking about to be done has not been considered. I see. And that is what the EC wants now that aspect to be added. Okay, hold on. Uh, Marco, you, you wanted to say something to what you said? Very briefly, because uh, yeah, I need to get a reaction to the Yeah, uh, uh, Samson, uh, good evening. I hope you are doing well. I mean, thank you for your insight. What, what for me and my party, we, we want to see is that the EC comes to us for the program lineup that going forward, we intend to organize elections in these countries to allow Ghanaian citizens access to exercise their franchise, yeah. and we are all for it. Okay. They knew that there will be some challenges. That's why they are bringing on board political parties now, yeah. so that we can but discuss. But they've done that before. And bro yes, it may have been done and earlier. And he mentioned, he mentioned your he mentioned, own Dambocho was on it. Yes. His uh, own Hudi Yaya that, was that, on that. That, that, that is fine. That is fine. Exactly. That is So why don't you simply implement that? that? They, so what, all they, the money. And I'm the time you that. spent on that document is going to go to waste? No. We always build on the information that 
has but you're forming another committee. Uh, you, you, ever, you, you've said the name ever, of ever, Dr. Ever, Kumbo. Ever, you are saying the name of um, General Dumbo. Secretary. You see, Meanwhile, 2011, you send the name of um, Dambotri. You send the name of Kuriyaya. Why? Kofi, one minute. You saying that? Why are you duplicating this? Money, money may have been spent on those documents, but which is less evil to rush into the implementation of it and have mm. challenges or to wait and allow political parties to have some inclusion in the discussion on implementation to give us But you've had, always had. But if, 2011, it easier, easier, you've if it was had. easier, if it was easier, I think the EC would have told us that going to 2020 elections, we're going to implement Europa and everybody okay. will be fine. There's another controversy surrounding, so if we, we really want to do this, maybe we should pilot it, Events. we should try it. Evans, yes. when sometimes you send your reporters go with the uh, to do presidential reports locally, uh -huh. you mostly go yourselves. Yeah. But sometimes when you are going abroad, we go with the you, president. You go with the president. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Let's hear the EC chairperson speak to the issue of, uh, regarding how to pilot this particular uh, suggestion of implementing Ropal. It will be difficult. We, haven't, we, we don't have people registered. So, I mean, district assembly is early next year, and, you know, you have to put in place modalities. We have our own limited registration process that will happen next year in earnest, extensively, all across the country. So you have to, if you do that, you have to go to 47 or 48 other countries and, you know, register people as well ahead of for the district assembly. So is that possible? I don't, I don't believe it should be. By, by the way, by the way, that's uh, a reaction to a, a suggestion made in the IPAC meeting by John Sassoon who said, listen, if you really want to do this, they in, a pilot it in the district level election. That's a reaction. Yeah, because she, she indicated in her presentation that whether we'll do it as a pilot or we'll go full swing. Okay. So I raise an issue that in elections, we don't have anything like pilot. pilot. Where... You go and get <laughs> this is half, with this, this general uh, 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 <laughs> No, I didn't disagree with him. My my argument was that when we say pilot, it means that do it in a limited area before later on you extend it to cover everybody. I'm saying the law doesn't say register in a limited area and allow people in limited area to exercise that right. Mm. Like say, okay, maybe mm. we're asking people in ECOWAS only. Mm. Then later before we extend it to uh, maybe Europe. You're either doing America. it or not doing it at all. So you're either doing it or not doing it at all. Okay. That was where the general secretary proposed that. Yeah. In the understanding of pilot, let's do it for the district level election to cover everybody. Okay. Because that one, when there are problems, yeah. you it know. may not, you can manage yeah. uh -huh, assembly area problem. But the national elections, <laughs> even you are contesting an election in, say, Adenta constituency. Yeah. You have, you have been declared a winner, maybe by local votes, yeah. by maybe 1,000. Exactly. Then they say, wait, hold on. <laughs> votes from Togo, <laughs> who, who are from Adenta, haven't come. Mm. Votes from Côte d'Ivoire, haven't come. Votes from come. London, haven't come. Votes from London, haven't come. Then they come and they say, you have been lost by, <laughs> by two votes. Can you imagine what will happen? The chaos that will happen. In 2008, late President Mills yeah. won by 48,000 48, 48, yeah. votes. Yeah. Can you imagine that? We say, oh, yeah. hold on. By Canada has way. finished voting. Let's wait for votes from but By the way, from, from, what we, from what we heard from the EC chairperson, she agrees with you that we can't do <laughs> it. So I think that is settled. And you, for, the, for you, you don't have a problem, right? Yeah, the EC yeah. agrees with you. You can't pilot it. Let's do it or no, we don't. Yes. Okay. Now, I, I want to take brief comments as, as we wrap up. So, Kofi, let me start with you. 2020, is it possible? It's just not possible. It's not possible. Because what goes into, even locally, identifying police stations, not that. look, the EC have just started... They're, they're brief because I don't have time. It's not possible. They've just, it's not possible. It's not possible. They, well, uh, Evans, it's not possible. Let's wait for the committee set up by the EC <laughs> to come out. Uh, what, but you know what, it's not possible. But, and let's see how we address the practical challenges, challenges. there. Samson, Samson, very briefly, and then uh, we lost Samson. Okay, good. Uh, but thank you, Samson, for uh, joining us uh, live on Skype. Thank you, uh, Ms. Adams, <laughs> for joining us. For the first time, you have the NDC and the MPP agreeing on something relating to the elections. Isn't that refreshing? My name is Evans Minter.